Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software, $100, and starting pricing for high-end software, $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal buyer's protection guarantee. From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Boom. There it is. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm here. How you guys doing? I'm live right now trying to get everything going on the broadcast. How y'all doing, man? <sighs> Waiting on my social media to lie, um, to to post up. I don't know why things are going slow right now. How y'all doing, man? I'm here and ready to do what I do. Why is my thing going slow? Okay. All right, just waiting on everybody to come on in the room. Glad to have everybody tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have all of you guys tuning in. <coughs> A lot of stuff we're going to talk about on tonight. And uh, while I'm waiting on everybody to come on in here, how about everybody give me a retweet? Let me turn my heat on because it's, it's cold out here in L.A. L.A., it got real cold out here. <coughs> Excuse me. It's real cold out here in L.A. I'm just saying. She was on a bit rate. Hold on. I'm looking at some stuff. It's talking about my bit rate. Let me, let me check some settings here while I'm recording and streaming. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Y'all bear with me one second. I'm looking at my bit rate. Hold on. Let me increase that real quick. It's telling me to increase my bit rate. Hold on one second. Let me do that. Uh, one second. I just got a little notice. Hand handling some little technical difficulties here. Getting that in order. But yeah, retweet this. Let everybody know that we're live right now, family. Let everybody know that we're live. Let folks know that we're live right now, ladies and gentlemen, and retweet this broadcast. That would be phenomenal. All right, let me just da, 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 say this for recording and I'll be paused. Let me see some. All right, hopefully this is streaming better. Just got a notice talking about my stream bit rate was off. But um, how's this, guys? Do y'all see me any better? I don't know what YouTube is talking about. All right. I don't know what they're talking about, but hell, I'm here. All right. So everybody, come on in the room. Um, I hope everybody got their root work. Hope you got your root work deodorant, ladies and gentlemen, at rootworkstyle.com. I'm about to come in the room now to see who's in here. Rootworkstyle.com. That's where you can get the phenomenal deodorant, root work. It seems dark in here or something, man. I don't know. I don't know. Trying to get my lighting and my feng shui together. All right. Trying to get all my lighting together. All right. Y'all good? Everything? Y'all can see me good. Y'all can hear me good. Everything is good, right? All right. Everything is good. Everything is... All right. Just getting the lighting and everything together. All right. So what's up? I'm here. I'm here. Everybody's in the room. Come on in the room. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. You waiting wait on your root work to come on in? Hey, man, we're getting them out fast. We're getting them out fast. 
and uh, we're making it do what it do. Shout out to everybody getting the root work. And again, we got some new root work scents coming up um, in a couple of months for the holiday season. You guys going to be good to go, but root work. This is the, one of the best sellers here. This is the coconut butter scent. Smells very good on your body. Feels very good on your body, ladies and gentlemen. It is a vibe. All right. How am I doing with the stream here? Okay, hold on. Let me see something. Because now my stream is looking funny style. Hold on. My stream is looking a little funny style. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me, let me do this. Because I don't want my stream to be out here tripping. All right. How am I doing stream wise? All right. All right, but we're here. <clears throat> we're here, so you need the powder fresh scent. We might have to work on that. We might have to do a powder fresh scent, but go to rootworkstyle.com and get your root work right now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, there's so much. Oh, you're behind. You don't know what root work is? Man, that's the phenomenal deodorant, man. Foundation of Black American Deodorant. Go to rootworkstyle.com and get up on that. If you don't know, rootworkstyle.com. All right, so we're looking good here. A lot of stuff we got to get into, family. Um, as most of you've heard, O'Keefe D, the, the guy who was involved in the murder of Tupac, they, they arrested him this week. And people knew that he was going to get arrested. For the last couple of months, people have been talking about the grand jury and there's a possibility of him getting arrested. Um, a lot of people are contributing that to a lot of the interviews he's doing. I'll talk about the, mu the museum in a minute. I'll discuss that in a minute. I'll talk about that in a minute. And I've been still waiting on some people um, to come through. Um, I'm going to talk about that. We'll, get on it. we'll talk about the museum permits in a second. But with Keithy D., a lot of people are kind of pointing the finger at Vlad, saying, yeah, Vlad, he does a lot of interviews with Vlad, and I know that Vlad has been contacted by the, the Vegas police and all of this stuff. Um, Keefe D has been going around doing interviews all over the place, really putting himself at the crime scene. He did a book about it. So he has put himself in the crime scene. Now, here, here's the deal. What Keefe D is saying, this isn't new information to law enforcement. None of what he's saying is new information to law enforcement. They knew all of this. This dude has been in that interrogation room. He cut a deal with the, was it the, the feds or did he cut a deal with the, the Vegas police? Because he cut some kind of deal. He got one of those queen for a day deals where he can kind of say what happened and nothing happens to him. So, you know, he, he's been kind of walking around with his chest poked out because of that. And you got to understand in the system of white supremacy, man, there are statutes of limitations and there's no immunity. You know, they'll say one thing and they'll renege on that. Immunity is just for the, the people in the dominant society. If you're a black person, there is no immunity. You know, they'll break that immunity nonsense up at the drop of a hat. Um. So now they got him in for, for murder. You know, the, he's definitely at, at the crime scene. I don't think he was the trigger man. I think, you know, he said his um, nephew Orlando was the trigger man. Most of the people involved are dead. Um, here's the thing. Here's the thing with that case. Why are they going after him now? I think that they're trying to get a bigger fish. I think there could be a possibility that they're using Keefe D., to possibly get at Puffy because Keefe D has mentioned several times that Puffy has thrown money at him, all right? Keefe D has said several times that they've thrown some, you know, that, that, that Puffy threw money at him. So they might try to be on some, well, we, we might as well kill two birds with one stone. We'll get this dude. It's a high-profile murder. We can run on being reelected by saying, hey, look, elect me. I'm the person who prosecuted Tupac's murder. So I'm the good guy. 
to the white people and the black people. Hey, black people, you like Tupac? Well, vote for me because I'm the person. I was the sheriff. I was the prosecutor who prosecuted the murder of Tupac. So I'm, I'm not racist. You know, they can, they can use a lot of political clout out of this. But sounds like they might have eyes on Puffy. They might have some eyes on Puffy. They might get him and they're going to get Keefy D in one of them rooms and he will talk. He's already been talking. So, yeah, they're trying to shake the tree and see what kind of fruit come out that tree. Because Keefy's been doing these interviews. See, that's what they they know all of it. None of the stuff about Tupac's murder is new with Keefy D involved. They've been knowing that. All the details, that's not, even with the Vlad stuff, those are not major revelations. Everybody knows all of the stuff that happens. We've been knowing that stuff since 96. All of that stuff is basically street knowledge. Everybody knows what it is. And the reason why they're getting down on it now, they're trying to probably get a bigger fish again. They're trying to see what Puffy had to do with it. They, if they're going to get a big fish, they want to go get a big fish. Yeah. If they want a big fish, they want to go for the, the biggest fish they can get. And Keefy keeps dry snitching. All right. Keefy D has been dry snitching for the last couple of years on Puffy. All right. That Keefy D is the walking emb embodiment of dry snitching. Keefy has been dropping that dude's name over and over in these interviews. Keefy been dry snitching like a mug. Because I think Keefe, deep down, he knows, you know, if something goes down, I'm letting the police know, hey, I got a little, let me holler at y'all. Go, go go get me a ham sandwich real quick and, and, a, and a beer. Because we're going to be in this interrogation room for a while. I got something to tell you. Yeah. So it's an interesting dynamic. It's a very interesting dynamic. All right. So we're going to see what this thing is about. But again, with Keefe D, none of that information is new. This is kind of public knowledge. This is not new information at all. Now, somebody, um, you're asking about the permits about the museum. We're still going through a lot of stuff, family. We're still going through a lot of stuff with the museum. Um, we haven't been able to do our events that we do, which, you know, is killing the funds for the museum. Because, you know, that's what we do. And the museum is free to get in. And we don't get no grants. So we've kept everything afloat by having events for the community. And let me tell you something. The L.A. community, the black folks in L.A. are absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. It is the black folks in L.A. who has kept the museum afloat this long. I got a shout out to the L.A. family out here. The brothers and sisters, man, we've been keeping the, the museum afloat from the community. The community has been doing so many phenomenal things with the museum, <clears throat> making things pop off. Just the support has been phenomenal. So that's why they, they kind of threw, they knew that's where, because we, we ain't getting no grants. Um, I, I keep telling people the grant game out here, when we keep using minority and disenfranchised communities, um, that's a trick bag. All of these other groups capitalize off that. We don't get any funding. We try. We try our darndest, but we don't get no funding. Yes, yeah, shout out to the donations from you guys too. Shout out to the donations from the family. We need more. And we absolutely need more. Um, because, you know, they're, they're trying to shut us down for real. LAPD and the city, they're giving us all types of weird runarounds, which I know for a fact. They're not giving these other groups the kind of runaround they're giving us. They're not doing that to them. There's no way you're making these people. They're, they're making us, first they made us get some blueprints. And shout out to my brother Antoine. The brother came through, he's an architect, and he came on through and handled that for us. We took that downtown. They were like, well, you got to go get a conditional use permit from that section over here. And with this conditional use permit section, they're requiring us to get approval from three other people who work for the city. Then you got to come back. And it, it's, uh, when I say red tape, the red tape is, 
it's, it's an, um, um, uh, an unusual amount of red tape. And then I got to talk to them tomorrow because I'm talking to some, I hate dealing with people outside of our community because we've been screwed several times with folks outside of the community. Let me say that. When we have to rely on people outside of our community, they screw us every time. This is why I'm always asking the family, is any any of you guys in LA or somebody who we can bring on to help us out, some people that we can trust in the community? Because folks outside of our community, they want to see us fail. They want to screw us over. Um, when we're trying to get our liquor license, we're trying to get a permanent liquor license. We went to this um, liquor license permit expediting company. We didn't gave these folks thousands of dollars and just thrown out the window. Then they turn back after months and months of us giving them thousands of dollars. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, now the city is, they're requiring a certain permit from you guys, and that's going to be like $40,000. Y'all didn't tell us that up front. Damn. So we didn't give you guys all that money for absolutely nothing. We didn't give y'all money for nothing. Little shit like that. So, you know, this, this is why we want folks within our community. Because the people from the community, man, they've been absolutely phenomenal. And with these conditional use permits that they're throwing on us, it's, it's you know, this is what they do. So, this is what they do. And and we're trying to, we didn't holler at some of these companies that actually do, do all the legwork for you. Some of these companies, they got companies that do permit expediting. They'll go deal with the city, deal with the police. But they're talking about, well, you got to give us 10000 and you got to give us 8000 Dude, no. So now these expediting companies want us to give them some paper, and that's not even guaranteed. Yeah? That's not even guaranteed. And again, these folks that hit us up, and we didn't hire publicity firms and all types of shit to do stuff for us, and they didn't got the money and ran and didn't do shit. We, we really, 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 really want to deal with the brothers and sisters here in the community. And I understand. Our community is small in L.A. The black community in L.A. is pretty small. It's there, but it's, it's, it's not as big as people think it is. A lot of black folks that moved all out to Riverside and the Palmdale and all of that. So our community is relatively small. And we're like one of the few black for real, for real, black owned, where we actually own the property. Um, so it's hard for us to network with other people who are business owners like that because we just don't have too many of them like that out here. We just don't have too many of them. You dig? So we just don't have a, a, a strong business network like we should out here. And, and that's unfortunate. That That's just because of the numbers. But they play this little game on us, man, when... Black folks, when it comes to us getting our paper together, the, the usual suspects are always trying to run a sabotage game. Did you, there was a case where these sisters down in Atlanta, they, they started a venture capitalist fund, a grant fund for black women, which I, I don't like too much of that gender stuff, but I, I okay, whatever. That's, you want to help some black people, that's fine. So these sisters down in Atlanta, they got a venture capital um, thing going, and they had a grant going that would help black women business owners. Let me find the thing real quick. Hold on. Where is it? Right here. All right. So these sisters here, they had, um, they got some resources together to give grants to sisters for businesses. So the white supremacist conservative groups, they're like, oops, that's discrimination. You know, they went and tried to sue these women. And then an appeals court made them pause the grant on discrimination grounds. Conservative groups sues the Fearless Funds alleged, alleging racial discrimination for helping black female founders. 11th Circuit Court of Appeals on in Atlanta on Saturday ordered Atlanta-based venture capital Capital firm Fearless Funds to pause grant applications supporting black female founders while a lawsuit alleging racial discrimination works its way through court. All right. 
The ruling is the first legal win for the nonprofit American Allegiance for Equal Rights, a conservative group started by Edward Blum. This guy is known for targeting black folks. Edward Bloom or Blum or whatever, he's known if a black person gets, a, if there's a, a crumb being flicked at a black person, boy, they got this these white lawyers on deck to start suing black folks or suing anybody who gives black folks a crumb. They got lawyers ready to start suing. And the venture cap, this is private money. This is private money. <laughs> they don't do this to nobody. Hispanics, Asians, all of that stuff, they don't do this for nobody. Um, but us, boy, we get a crumb flicked our way. And this is us. We're not even getting it from the government. This is uh, other black folks saying, hey, look, if we're going to be shut out of the grant program, let's give each other grants. Ups, up, up, up. Discrimination. Up, this is discrimination. But when we help each other, they really get perturbed. When we say, you know what, we, we're going to leave, since y'all ain't going to give us nothing, we're going to stand here and help each other. Oh, wait a minute, Negroes. Oh, wait, wait, not so fast. If you're going to help each other, what about me? Are you discriminating against me because I'm white? So, yeah, these, these folks, man, they are so invested in us failing. This is why we have to be adamant about supporting each other. This is why... We have to use, and I like to, to use lineage-based terms. This is why I like to use lineage-based terms. So we're going to give something to people. We're not going to give it to them based on race. We got to start giving people things and helping them out based on lineage. Okay? Let's do it based on lineage and circumstances. Foundational Black American freedmen who were descendants from slaves. Yeah, we're going to start helping those people. That's not racially based. That's lineage based. Yeah. This is why we use lineage based terms. I heard an interview with our brother, Claude Anderson. He was on um, one of these Twitter spaces the other day, breaking the game down. That's who I got the, the, the information from talking about how important it is for us to use terms like native black American. And we shouldn't use African American. Oh yeah, they love the bootstrapism. They love telling us about some damn bootstraps. And the minute we sit here and try to help each other, they're the first people to tear it down. Let me tell you something, when black people, and we're, we're doing it, man, we, we're we're going to keep doing what we do. Even with the obstacles being thrown our way, we're going to keep doing what we do. We're going to keep looking out for each other. We're going to keep building. We're going to keep doing what we do. And by the way, the new the, the trailer for the new documentary will be out in a couple of days, ladies and gentlemen. The trailer for the new film is almost ready. We're about to start cooking with that, by the way. The trailer for the new documentary film, will it'll be ready in a couple of days. But again, our brother Claude Anderson was talking about how early 1800s, they stopped importing people from Africa over here, and there were already a lot of black people here. We have to use the term Native Black American or similar terms, because using the term African American, that's a misnomer. Our Africanness was stripped away from us, the few who were brought over from Africa. So that brother's been breaking the game down. That's who I got it from. The, the, the concept of using the term foundational black American, I got it from Dr. Claude Anderson. That's one of my mentors. I brought Dr. Claude Anderson out of retirement over a decade ago. Basically, he was basically retired. And I put him in Hidden Colors 2 and introduced him to a whole new audience. And people were like, oh my God, this brother's the truth. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, where my, my LA, my lawyers out here in LA, my black lawyers... If y'all can holler so we can get some advice, that would be great. All of my black lawyers in L.A., my black people out here in L.A. who are who understand the permit game out here. I know we're limited out here, but yeah, please holler at me, man. I would love to do business with you. I, I do not like, man, going to these other people. 
I, I, I loathe doing it. I loathe it. And I only do it because there is we don't have any other options. We don't have any other options. I got to go to these other people and they are finessing their asses off. But we done been finessed so many times by all of these other groups. I, I really don't like dealing with them. Yeah. But we do need help. You know, running a, a project like this and we letting people in for free every day. So, you know, it's it's a task. But our brother Claude Anderson was making some good points about just using the term African-American. We just have to not use that term. We have to not use that term no more. I mean, it sounds it sounded good for a while. But when you break it on down, no, 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 no. We're foundational black Americans, man. We are our own ethnic group. Yeah. And we have a culture that we need to be gatekeeping. Yeah. Hold on. I just saw something. Where is that? I saw something with Rotimi recently. I just saw something with Rotimi talking about African-American. What is that? Hold on, where is that? Where is that thing somebody sent me? Uh, where is that clip? Where is it? D. Tubman, do you have that clip of Rotimi talking about how he's the embodiment of an African-American and all this stuff? Where is that clip of him talking about that? There's a new clip of him. I want to find that clip. Uh, where is that clip of Rotimi? If somebody has that clip, please send it to me. Where is that clip? Somebody, I know somebody in the room has it. I know somebody has that clip of Rotimi talking about being African American or whoopty whoop or whatever he's talking about. Hold on. I'm trying to look for it while I'm talking to you guys. Uh... If y'all can help me find it, that'll be great. If y'all can help me find that clip, I would like to play it right now. That would be great. If somebody can post it in the chat room. I wanted to post that clip. Uh, or send it to Nikki or D. Tubman. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. We almost got 5,000 people in here. Shout out to everybody in the room. Shout out to the family. And by the way, get your root work at rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right. But talking about us controlling our image as foundational black Americans, that's very important because we're doing that right now. We are saying, you know what, we're going to start looking out for each other. We're going to start controlling our image. Is that it, Scrap Dirty? Hold on. Shout out to Scrap Dirty. Hold on. Let me see if this is it. Hold on one second. Ah, uh, is that it? Is that it? Uh, uh, I don't, this, this clip is too long and I don't know. I can't go through this whole clip. Yeah, that clip is too long and I can't go through the whole thing. Is that it, Nikki? Hold on. Nikki the God got something. Hold on. Uh, uh, y'all, y'all sending me this long clip. Okay. Y'all send me a long clip and I don't know what, what minute mark is it? Y'all sent a long clip, and I don't know what minute mark is it. Y'all sent me a, a two-hour clip. Yeah, I, I can't do nothing with that right now. Okay, let's see what D. Tubman got, okay? Let's see what D. Tubman got. Because D. be on it. Um, African Americans. No, th this, I don't think that's it. Now, this is something where they're talking about hip-hop. Wait, well, let me see if this is it. What? Let me see what this is. Hold on. This is something that was on Revolt. Hold on. Let me see what this is. No, because he was talking about how, being an African-American and how he's African and he's American. So that's what I was talking about. Hold on. Let me see what this clip is with them. Um, I know they were on here talking about hip-hop on Revolt. Hold on one second. Hold on. Let me Let me play this. Y'all bear with me. All right, hold on. 
Hip hop has always had a multicultural foundation. It was created in, by a Jamaican American. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I cannot wait to next week. Well, this week when the trailer comes out. I'm family. But when I hear this lie, it it just gets me going. I can't wait for you guys to see the trailer of this new film this week, family. I want you to have the ammunition when they start lying. Just hit them. Just hit them with the trailer. God, I want y'all to just shut this down once and for all. God, I want it to be shut down. Hip hop has always had a multicultural foundation. It was created in, by a Jamaican American and influenced by West African traditions. And it's, it's fortunate we have two West no, African. No, it, no, it wasn't. 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 No, it was influenced by West African. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. God, I, I'm sorry. I hate having to stop it over and over. I'm just so. I, I, God, y'all don't know how much. This is why. I'm, I'm looking kind of tired. I've been, we've been working on this movie. So family, y'all don't understand how hard we're working on this movie, family. Y'all really don't understand how hard. I'm so ready to get this movie out to stop these lies. Y'all don't understand. Family, I'm, I'm, I'm working so hard to stop these lies. <laughs> and they're, tr they're just going to keep going on and on with these lies. We have to shut it down. We're going to have, and we're going to shut it down, family. Y'all just wait. The trailer is coming this week. The trailer is coming this week. And these people know that the trailers, they know we got a movie coming out. Let me tell y'all something. People know they're buzzing about the movie that we're doing. The mo They're buzzing already. The buzz is already there. So now there's like a rush to just get all the lies out. Let's just keep lying and just nonstop lie. Lie, lie, lie. Just let's just keep lying as hard as we can, because when the movie, when the trailer comes out, damn, forget about when the movie comes out. That's gonna be a few months. But when the trailer come down this week, that's gonna start drying up some of the lies already. All right. When we put the trailer out in a couple of days, y'all got a couple of days. We're gonna do a premiere of the trailer right here in a couple of days. That's gonna start shutting some of the lies down already. All right. Okay. Oh, but when I hear these lies, God. All right. Let me play. Let me see what Rotimi is saying. Hold on. Africa's here, and we have Spice Hills in Jamaica. So tell us, what does some way that hip hop makes you feel at home? So we're going to start with Rotimi. Makes me feel at home? Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, the storytelling, man. Like, nobody tells better stories than hip hop and country music. You know what I mean? So with us, hearing people's journey, relating to a lot of stuff at times, and then seeing the creativity with wordplay is unmatched, you know what I mean? And, and it shows how brilliant we are and how creative we are. You know, we're taking poetry and making it something that just feel like you want to dance to. It's not, very, it's not very easy, you know? So for it to transcend for so many years and still continue to grow in different formats and you see so many different things, how words are used, it's amazing, man. And it brings people together. So it could be used for good, you could be used for bad, War, everything is powerful. So I think it just shows me how dynamic we are as people. Okay, now that ain't the clip. That ain't the one I'm looking for. Yeah, that. But that that's an interesting clip nonetheless. But that's not the one we're looking for. But yeah, all that it brings us together. No, we're not. We it, it's gonna bring y'all together to start lying. Yeah, you guys are not exemplifying the spirit of hip hop if you're getting together to tell a damn lie. That ain't the spirit of damn hip hop. Y'all lying all the damn time. Y'all wait, we got a couple of days, man. <clears throat> the trailer is coming. The trailer is coming, family. It's coming in a couple of days. But like I said, man, we're taking control of our history. We're taking control of our narrative. Um, we're taking control of our image because when we let the dominant society run with our image, it's always negative. They're always trying to tell us to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and all of this stuff. But when we do, they still try to sabotage us. When we show images of ourselves on our own terms that are positive, 
Look at the people who get upset about it. There was a video that was posted that went viral online of a group of black men. I don't know what city they're in, but it was a group of black men got together, got suited and booted, um, took a video where they were vibing, just showing how fly they are and just showing black male unity. And it was a great video. The brothers look great. Brothers dress great. A nice display of positive black manhood. Brothers suited and booted. And let me show the video clip. It's a cool clip. And boy, folks were actually hating on this. Folks actually found fault in this. Just a bunch of black men. Look at this video here. Hold on, let me turn the music down. Oh, let me turn the music. Oh, oh, let me turn the music down because I don't want to copyright strike. So got a bunch of black men suited and booted. What what city is this, guys? I can't tell what city this is. What city is this, all of my people? That was Dallas. Okay. Shout out to Dallas. Again, that's where we had our event down in Dallas. Okay, and this is why you see we chose Dallas for the FBA Expo. You got a lot of fly brothers and sisters out there in Dallas. That's one of the reasons why I chose Dallas. Dallas has a lot of good energy down there, a lot of progressive brothers. Look at them brothers, man, suited and booted. Good look. Fresh, clean, love it. I, I love the vibe down there in Dallas. Good brothers down there. You did Suited and booted brothers, nothing but positivity, unity, brothers controlling their image on their own terms. You dig? Brothers added popping. Shout out to them brothers, man. Shout out to them. So these brothers did this video. The video, look at it, got 17 million views. It went viral. Do y'all know there were people actually hating on this? There were people actually finding fault with this. Looking at some of the comments, boy, there were some people. Hold on. Let's look at some of the comments. Let's look at some of the comments. What's positive about black men in suits? Are they doing community service in their suits? Are they feeding the hungry in their suits? Are they protecting and giving back? That's what need to be shown. Now, the guy in that comment is very moist, all right? Um, so, yeah, you're going down to some of the comments. There were some people making up lies about the brother. If there's a positive outcome, I'll support it. Um, um, some girl here, oh, this is performative. Okay. So, yeah, they're saying little slick comments in here. Um, let me see. A lot of real weird comments. They really thought they did something with this. Hold on. Hold on. Let me look at some of the people saying this stuff. Look at the people's profile. Hold on. Da, 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 da. Where is this? Where is this? Where is this? All right. Now, look at the person talking crap. Yeah, they thought they did something with this. And it's a stud. All right. Just, I'm just letting y'all know some of the people talking crazy. This is a stud who got married. And I'm I'm smelling Joloff with this stud. All right. The stud got on some. Hold on. The stud got on some white kitten heels. Hold on. Let me, let me show the picture. Hold on. Where we at, man? Damn. The stud got on a suit and some white kitten heels. So, so we're just giving you an idea who the haters are. We're giving you an idea who the people actually hating are, all right? Yeah, they thought they did something. This ain't nothing. Um, I don't see enough working men. Oh, man. Oh, so what now? Yeah, what are they doing for the community? I need more context. Let's look at some of the people talking greasy. All right. Um, I, I smell Bammy. I smell Bammy and jerk sauce. All right. 
I'm smelling a lot of Bammy, rainbow flags, and jerk sauce. All right. Is this a community service project? I mean, people talking greasy about brothers in suits. All the brothers did was get together, wear suits, doing their thing, and you got people talking greasy. Hold on. Hold on. Da 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 da. Um. Da 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 da. I'm looking at some other. So it was a whole bunch of comments. A whole bunch of weird. Oh, yeah. This is one of the dudes talking greasy. He's got ashy knees, some cowboy boots, and some booty shorts, some, some booty cutters. All right? So people actually sat here and tried to find fault with these brothers wearing suits. What's this? Why do us black men have to wear suits to sh show positivity? Okay. Hating for no damn reason. All right? So listen, a bunch of brothers wear suits and you're getting weird, hating comments from the usual suspects. The rainbow flags, a lot of them talking greasy. A lot of the cake soap crowd. And of course, some, some of the white supremacists talking greasy about these brothers wearing suits. Now, why are they so upset? When you see black men who are portraying masculinity. So here's the thing. Because they are black men portraying masculinity, that's the problem. And they're suited and booted, they're wearing suits. These are black men portraying masculinity. Okay, this is the, the, the clip of Rotimi. I'm going to play that in a minute. I'm going to play that in a minute. Hold on. Thank you, D. Tubman. Shout out to D. Tubman. D. Tubman actually found the clip of um, the, the Rotimi clip I was looking for. Hold on one second. All right. Hold on one second, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on one second. I'm going to play that in a second so y'all hear what I'm talking about. Well, let me, let me play it now before I get back into my point. This is the Rotimi clip. Shout out to D. Tubman. This is the Rotimi clip of... Um, him talking about him being African-American. Hold on one second, hold on. I'm the definition of African-American. Okay. Genuinely. Wow. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I am the actual balance of what that is. Mm. So for me, for a long time, I ran away from it because I was trying to sound like so many different artists because it wasn't cool. I'm the definition oh. of African. Okay, fair use by the way. So this is what I'm talking about, see? That African-American thing, anybody can come and latch on to that. This is why that African-American thing, we got to, we, 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 no, we had to get away from it. Because anybody can latch on to it. That has nothing to do with our lineage. Anybody can latch on to that. That's why we're saying, no, nah, no, no, we're going to have to look at our lineage as foundational black Americans. All right. But going back to the, the clip about these brothers in the suits, I want y'all to think about something. When you see people hating on black men suited and booted. Why is that? Because when you see black men suited and booted and they're projecting an image of black masculinity, see, that's the thing. If they were black men in suits, but they had on heels, nobody would have a problem. All right? In fact, people would be praising their suits. If these were black men wearing some kitten heels in their suits, everybody would be praising it. But it's black men giving off the image of black masculinity, manhood, and leadership. And a lot of people with the plantation mindset, they are always intimidated by black men who are portraying a heterosexual image of leadership and masculinity. Because when you are a black man and you are in a suit, All eyes are going to be on you. Where are my black men who are businessmen or who work in the corporate sector, sector or who are just businessmen? Let me tell you something. When you wear a suit, suits give off the air of leadership. All right? Suits are very important to make a good impression. When you're a black man and you got on a suit, so that's different from a white man in a suit. White man in a suit, cool. He's, he's handling business. When you see a black man suited and booted, that shit hits different. 
All eyes are going to be on that black man. When a black man is suited and booted, damn, what has that brother got going on? All eyes are on him. I'm telling y'all business here. When a, when a black man is suited and booted and he walks in the room, all eyes are on him. People want to know what that brother got going on. And when he's a masculine black man, the choosing starts. Y'all brothers know what I'm talking about in corporate America. If you're the straight black man at the job or you do business somewhere, you see how the women be treating you when you go in suited and booted. I'm talking about all the women, the black, white, and everybody else, they get to choosing hard. And people know that. When the brothers come in suited and booted, all the women start choosing. And then folks start getting intimidated. That's why in corporate America, they love somebody running around switching. They love that. But when you have an image of a bunch of black men suited and booted, the plantation Negroes get nervous because, see, that becomes contagious. You're trying to project an image, as you should, to younger black boys. So, hey, look at us. Be like that. So when you see black men walking into their manhood, walking into their leadership position, yeah, shout out to our RIP to Kevin Samuels. That brother would always stay suited and booted and they hated him. RIP and shout out to our brother Kevin Samuels. He stayed suited and booted and they hated him. Certain people hate, the people who want the plantation mindset. Because when a black man comes in the room suited and booted, he's all about some leadership business. Immediately, you see that brother has leadership vibes. And when black men are setting the tone for leadership, that means everybody else around have to step it up. That means everybody's going to have to step it up. Dusty niggas, you can't be running around sagging when you see a brother suited and booted. When a brother's suited and booted, all the sagging, dusty niggas, nobody's going to be really looking at you unless it's hood rats. You understand? And the types of people who hate on brothers who are suited and booted are usually hood rats because they see the suited and booted brother out of their league. So they want to try to throw a, a couple of rocks to bring them down a couple of pegs. Because I see uh, there was a couple of other women kind of hating on these brothers. Then you look at them. A lot of them are over the hill, dusty hood rats that brothers ain't really checking for. You think? A lot of times when brothers are suited and booted, the low budget women with the hood rat mentality where all a nigga got to do is throw a bag of weed to you. And then he got your heart. The, the, the energy is different when you see a brother suited and booted. You know you ain't got a shot. And this is one of the comments for the suited and booted brothers. Case in point. This woman here, case in point. Free black people from thinking that seeing random niggas in a suit is inspirational. So she's hating on the brothers in the suit, but this is another one of her tweets right here. I low-key love a hood nigga. Okay. You you see you see the mindset here? You see the types of people who hate on suited and booted brothers? You, you see the type? There's a type that 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 does that kind of hating. You know? There's a type for that. You know? So when brothers are showing a leadership type of position, that goes against what the white supremacists want. They go out of their way to take away our masculinity. They don't like to show that image of a black man. So when we start portraying ourselves in positive ways, folks who don't want to get up off that plantation, well, they got something real weird and silly to say about it. And we need to keep this energy. That's a very good look of brothers taking control of their image. People talk that stuff about us picking ourselves up by the bootstraps. And when we do, we got folks hating. When people talk about, well, y'all need to fix your communities. When we do, when we do things like 
hey, let's not buy weed dispensaries. Let's not buy liquor stores. Let's not buy a strip joint. Let's get a museum for our community. Look at all the hate we got for the museum. Think about that. No notice all the hate, all of the hundreds of hate videos for a museum. We got something positive for the community. Look at all the hate we got because, see, that's contagious when we start taking control of our destiny. We know the dominant society. They're going to start trying to throw monkey wrenches at us. We already know that. But when you have the moist class, the hood rat class, and the tether class trying to undermine black male positivity, that's something that we have to recognize is a threat internally to us. We have to recognize that's an internal threat. So I want to shout out to those black men in Dallas. You guys look phenomenal. The vibe was phenomenal. We have to keep that energy up. We have to be mentors to these young males out here to let them know how we should do it. We should let them know this is how you should roll. You know, when, when I get up, when I get suited and booted, oh, my sons love that. Every now and then, you know, when I'm handling business, I like to... I like for my sons to see me handling business. They love it when dad is out there suited and booted. Well, my son told me one time I had a suit on and they were like, oh, dad, you look like a sir. <laughs> like, you know, I, I got to call you sir. He knew instinctively when I'm wearing a suit, I got to show you a certain level of respect. You're like, you look like a sir. Meaning I got to show you a certain level of respect in that suit, dad. Kids even know when you wear suits, people instinctively show you a certain level of respect. And the image of black males is that you're supposed to disrespect black males at all times. So the fact of black men portraying themselves in a way that is supposed to garner respect. Oh, no, we can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Like, oh, damn, if we give black men respect. No, you're going to show the respect you're supposed to show. Yeah. You understand? It's very important that we create these images to show our children. Because we there's propaganda being thrown at us left and right, left and right, ladies and gentlemen. They're throwing propaganda at us left and right. So again, I take my hats off to those brothers. But we got 6,000 people in here. We are in here heavy. By the way, um, get your Root Work deodorant, ladies and gentlemen, at rootworkstyle.com if you have not gotten your Root Work deodorant. Um, we're talking about the plantation performances um, from some of these Democratic shills, these folks. A couple of names are coming up. Jamal Bowman. You got a lot of these Democratic Negroes who are very passionate and performative when it comes to doing things for the Democratic Party, but they get so passionate. And we got to show black males being passionate for our community. The only time we see some of these Negroes act passionate is when they're caping for Zaddy, when they're doing something for the white Democrats or some of their other um, um, programs or entities. And I'm tired of seeing black people in the political um, sphere do all of this passionate caping for all of these other groups. They're showing out, they're getting beat up and doing protests. And just like those dudes down there in Memphis, the, 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 the Democratic dudes with the Afros and the Asian black dude, they were going around caping for immigrants and LGBT stuff and they're running around with the Afros doing the black fists. I, we forgot their names. We got them out of the paint. We weren't going to let them use us. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I can't even remember their names. What's the guy's name? You know, he was the dude, the black dude was doing all of that fake Dr. King talk when they got thrown out of Congress or whatever, and then they got put back. All of that was performative, and he's up here doing a speech. I'm so glad. Are you glad? I'm, ain't you glad? I'm so glad. I'm so glad, free at last, I'm so glad. All that performative nonsense. They're good at performing and being passionate for all of these other groups. So you had um, Jamal Bowman, 
they got some hearings going on and they're saying, they said that Jamal Bowman pulled a fire extinguisher in order to stop some proceedings. I don't think he did that. I think that was some, some right wing propaganda. I honestly don't think he did that. I don't think he did that. Um, I think that was all cap. Um, the right wingers ran with it. They said that he pushed, he pulled an emergency lever. They got this picture of him. But I think he might have genuinely went in the wrong door. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the cape on for him. Uh, but they tried to say he was trying to delay the vote by um, opening up or pulling an, a, a fire alarm. And they're tr talking about he should be charged or whatever. I don't know. He could have possibly did it. I don't know. But the, the white supremacist right wingers, they lie so much. You can't even trust them because they will lie. I, he said he did. They said they got pictures. He might have if he did. He's a clown for that. If he actually pulled it, he's a clown. They got him on camera looking like that. I don't know. I, somebody, I don't know who's lying. The white supremacists lie. The Democrats are liars. So who knows? But he might be a big enough Sambo to fall on the sword for these people. If he did it, you a big old clown if you did that. If you actually did it, he triggered the alarm so he can take the heat. You dumb as hell. Again. So he was up there. He, he, he was somewhere arguing with these people. Where's the thing? He's arguing. He's so passionate talking about gun control and all of this stuff. So all of this is very performative. Hold on. So this is him just going off. Hold on. Hold on. Allows teachers to carry. Carry guns? Would you, would you, would you more guns lead to more death? Would you more guns lead to more death? Look at the data. You're not looking at any data. The you're data. Data. you're, you're data. carrying the gun from the gun lobby. No, no, Look at the data. More guns lead to more deaths. Guns. States that have open carry laws have more death. They're every school States that have open carry laws have Okay, so now they got him playing the crazy Negro role. All right. Oh, Lord. So they got him yelling. They The, the Democrats love getting these folks for their agendas. And they out here just really performing, being loud and yeah, just being extra, being extra passionate. They're never this passionate about black issues and gun rights. That's not that's not a black issue. Don't let them say that. That's not a black issue. The gun rights, that's not a black issue. Don't let them ever fool you with that. Because when we say, hey, man, what are y'all doing for the black community? Well, I was passionate about gun rights and all these guns are killing black people. And we got to do something about these guns, the gun rights. No, 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 no. That's not a black issue. That's not a black issue for one. Um, most black people are not out here killing each other. That's not an issue. Y'all like to blow up. Let me tell you, the gun problem is not a problem. Uh, the killings are done in, in, in very select neighborhoods, number one. And plus, those guns are hot. Those guns are hot and stolen anyway. These are hot guns, so that is not that has nothing to do with the black community. That's uh, hood shit. That's hood shit. All right. So the the gun rights that don't affect us either way. If they said, "Hey, we're gonna do whatever with guns, and nobody has a right to buy a gun over a counter," the illegal guns are already out there. All right. The illegal guns are already out there in the streets. Um, yeah, we got to watch some of these topics they always throw on us, especially the whole fatherhood thing. Y'all watch that, that whole, well, the, the problem in the black community is fatherlessness. And fa family, don't ever get caught up into the fatherless circle. The problem in the black community is white supremacy, is not fatherlessness. We got black men out here. Um, in fact, the CDC did a study. They showed that black fathers are more active in their children's lives, really more so per capita than any other group.
All right. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Because, see, they keep throwing these lies out here about black fathers um, doing the... Hold on. It's, it, people don't actually look at some of these studies. Studies show black dads are more involved in their children's lives than other groups. Black fathers are there. Black fathers are active. That's a disgusting lie. And it's an I'm white and I say so lie that they've been throwing at us for the longest in order to justify harming us. All right. That whole fatherlessness lie, or there ain't no black fathers in the community, which means there's black crime. That's a con game in order to justify harming us. Because instead of saying, hey, the problem is white supremacy. No, 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 no. The, the, the problem is y'all choosing the black dads ain't around and these whorish black women are out here having a bunch of babies and being single mothers and raising these kids because that's a slight on black women too, by the way. So ain't no fathers around and then that turns the kids into criminals. So you guys are your own problem. It's not white supremacy. You guys created your own problem. And our studies show from our white supremacist think tanks that fatherlessness creates crime. So you, your fault, it's your fault that you're criminals and we have to punish criminals. So when we lock you up or shoot you, it's your fault that we're doing this because you didn't have a father. Ain't no fathers in your community. Say that's a whole white supremacist con game that we should never fall for. That's a white supremacist talking point coming from the think tanks in order to justify harming us. That's why when you start asking people like Larry Elder, um, shout out to my, my, my brother Van Lathan, when you ask them, okay, Larry, what are you doing about black fathers, fatherlessness? What are you doing? Uh, uh, um, 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 answer my question first. Um, what do you mean? Um, so you agree that the answer the question, dude. You said the problem is fatherlessness. What are you doing to fix it? Well, what if, well, so you agree that there's nigga, answer the question. See, they can't they can't go beyond the talking point. Because the it, that's all it is. It's a bad faith talking point. Uh oh, we got some white supremacists in here, they're mad. That's a bad faith talking point. The talking point is to justify harming us. There is no solution other than to harm us and blame us for them harming us. We had to shoot you. You didn't have a dad. Well, yeah, Trayvon Martin had a dad. You killed him. But it's the father. What about Chicago? Shit. Trayvon Martin didn't live in Chicago. Yeah. What about black on black crime? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these are bad faith arguments, family. That's why we don't really engage in these bad faith arguments. It's all deflective and bad faith. The problem is systematic white supremacy. Nothing more, nothing less. But again, when, when it comes to these politicians, they're doing a lot of passionate plantation performances. And there was this woman, boy, speaking of Bowman, we, we see his plantation performance. Did y'all see Jasmine Crockett, Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett, I think, I don't, what city is Jasmine in? So she was up here. There's some kind of hearing about Joe Biden. So they sent her up there to be the passionate plantation mammy. Boy, she was getting into some performative mammyisms. I'm sorry. And the thing is, she was doing all of this sassy sister girl stuff. And you had a lot of the Democratic shields all online trying to signal boost like yes queen oh she read them oh she cleared that room girl you showing her that I'm, oh i love her this wasn't a flex this wasn't a flex at all dude this was mammyism all this sassy stuff and she was flinging her weave around this was mammyism this wasn't a good look at all so she's up here defending Biden. Hold on one second. Let me play the clip of her getting into the mammyism. And boy, wait, and I'm trying to see where where is she from, dude? Where's her? They say she's from St. Louis. Where her family from? Boy, that that weave and that that wig. 
Boy, she had a Princess and the Frog wig. It, it that wig is is giving the Ikeettes boy shit. She had on an Ikeettes wig and she's flinging it around. So she's from St. Louis, like with uh, um, Ike Turner and them are from St. Louis, I think. So shit. She had a leftover Ikeet wig she was flinging around, but hold on, hold on. Here we go. Have you ever heard them say if since we've been sitting here for I don't know how long? Yes, I, I, um, I've been taking a tally. Oh, okay. Can you um, show us? Can you so tell us what the tally is? More than 35 times the Republican witnesses and Republican members of the committee have used the word if. Thank you so much for that. Because honestly, if they would continue to say if or Hunter and we were playing a drinking game, I would be drunk by now. Because I promise you, they have not talked about the subject of this, which would be the president. But let me tell you something that was so disturbing as I walked in to this chamber today. As I prepared, I said, what is the crime? Because when you're talking about impeachment, you're talking about high crimes or misdemeanors. And I, I can't seem to find the crime. And honestly, no one has testified of what crime they believe the president of the United States has committed. But when we start talking about things that look like evidence, they want to act like they blind. They don't know what this is. These are our national secrets. Looks like in the shitter to me. This looks like more evidence of our national secrets. Girl. Say on the stage at Mar-a-Lago. When we're talking about some... Did she say Mar-a-Lago? God, Lord. Family, did she say Mar-a-Lago? Okay, all right. And Okay, all right. This looks like more evidence... That's, that's kind of a St. Louis accent. Okay, all right, okay. ...of our national secrets say on the stage at Mar-a-Lago. When we're talking about somebody that's committed high crimes, it's at least indictments. Let's say 32 counts related to unauthorized retention of national security secrets, seven counts related to obstructing the investigation, three false statements, one count of conspiracy to defraud the United States, falsifying business records, conspiracy to defraud the United States, two counts related to efforts to obstruct the vote certification proceedings, one count of conspiracy to violate civil rights, 23 counts related to forgery or false document statements, eight counts related to soliciting, and I could go on because he's got 91 counts oh, pending. Girl. Twisting that neck and flinging that damn bang. Lord. Right now. But I will tell you what the president has been guilty of. He has unfortunately been guilty of loving his child unconditionally. Oh, Lord. This is mammyism. Lord, she's caping for Zaddy. And that is the only evidence that they have brought forward. And honestly, I hope and pray that my parents love me half as much as he loves his child. Until they find some evidence, we need to get back to the people's work, which means keeping this government open so that people don't go hungry in the streets of the United States. And I will yield. Oh, Lord. Some of y'all Democratic sambos, y'all thought this was a flex. This was love and hip hop. She flinging that damn bang around. The only thing he guilty of in loving his child. I wish my child, I wish my parent loved me. Y'all up here, y'all didn't say nothing about no Merlago. Hold up, hold up. I'm gonna tell y'all like your T.I. is. Now, y'all didn't say nothing about Merlago. Uh, get the fuck out of here. That wasn't a flex. That wasn't a flex at all, family. Her and that dry bayang she flinging around. No, that wasn't a flex, family. No, that that they had her go up there and perform a damn stereotype. She went up there and performed a stereotype for Zaddy Biden. That was performative mammyism. Y'all don't fling them bayangs when it comes to getting black folks something. Yeah, go up there. Now, if you flinging that bayang to get a reparations check, yeah, well, I might can pop my collar to you. But yeah, y'all don't, you're not flinging that lace front around for us, boy. And this is her with Zaddy Biden, boy. That's her with Zaddy Biden. All right. So yeah, the plantation performances, I ain't with it. That ain't a flex. 
and I made a post about it. You had all the Democratic shields. Y'all hating. On, here they go. Y'all be hating on the black girl magic. Oh, shut up. Y'all mad at her intelligence. Y'all just mad because she is intelligent. Y'all mad at the sister girl, her intelligence, and she out here doing things, and y'all mad at her intelligence. Y'all just hate an intelligent sister. Don't sit here and talk about an intelligent sister. And this woman said, Merlago. Don't say that now. Don't talk about how intelligent she is, and she's talking about some Merlago. All right, come on now. I ain't saying she's unintelligent, but shit. But I, there's a batch of butter biscuits somewhere. There's a batch of butter biscuits somewhere. Boy, and they were hating when we were calling out the mammyisms in her thing. Oh, they were hating on it. Oh, well, where are some of the comments? Boy, I posted that. Boy, the comments. Oh, boy, the comments. Boy, they were mad. All the tethers were mad. Look at some of the comments, boy. Um, there's a lot of self-hating in this comment section. Uh, what are you at? Oh, Lord. I don't get what's wrong. Um, let me see. Oh, you say anything for clicks. Oh, they just, they just saying, they, they so mad and pissed off because we call that out. That's not a good look. That's, that's performative mammyism. And we don't need that. Uh, all that passion, you guys are passionate for everything except what's in the benefit for black people. Yeah. So we're not playing that game. And speaking of um, what's in the benefit of black people and the images that we show of ourselves, um, you have that chick, Bobby. What's this white girl who they keep doing interviews with? This weird white girl, Bobby something. Her stick is to get around black people and look real uncomfortable. So they had her, and, and this woman, she I'm not gonna play the audio. Bobby something, but she she interviews, she interviewed Drake, Shaq, um, Offset, and she gets around black entertainers, and just her whole stick is to act real uncomfortable around them. So she's at a strip club with Sookie, and she's standing around looking real uncomfortable, which is her shtick. Her whole thing is looking white and uncomfortable. And, you know, she gives these real dry, smarmy interviews. And I keep telling people, listen, this white woman, man, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be, and this is another image of her. This is, I think she was doing an interview with Drake. She was laying in the bed with Drake or somebody. So that's her doing these real dry, sarcastic interviews and looking real uncomfortable. I'm telling people, man, and I, I said this when I was on No Jumper a few weeks ago, that woman is a Me Too accusation waiting to happen. I'm telling you guys, this woman is going to flip um, when this little shtick dries up. Um, there's going, It's going to be some Me Too stuff. Um, she's going to do what pearly things do. When they get older, they always flip and go hit that right wing money. They go for the right wing money, just like pearly things. They go for that alt-right money, that alt-right audience start making little weird comments about black folks. So she already has the material. So when she flips, she already has the material. She already has, say, look, look, remember five years ago when I was doing these interviews? Look at how uncomfortable I was. It's a train wreck waiting to happen. I'm telling you guys, man. That's a damn train wreck waiting to happen. That's a train wreck waiting to happen, guys. And I'm telling you, it, it's, you know who that reminds me of? She reminds me of somebody else. She reminds me of somebody else. That woman reminds me of this woman right here, ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't remember. She reminds me of this right here. How many of y'all remember this? 
and I did a broadcast about this years ago. How many of y'all remember this? Tabitha Soren from MTV. We got to do, let's, let's, let's bring it back. Let's give you guys a refresher. Let's give a refresher. It's Tabitha Soren from MTV. When Tabitha did this interview with Tupac back in 1995. She did this interview with Tupac. It was a cool interview. She was acting normal. She wasn't even acting like the Bobby woman. She was acting normal. So years later, after Tupac dies, Tabitha Soren gets older. Y'all remember some years back, Tabitha Soren started doing interviews talking about how in that interview with Tupac, Tupac was flirting with her. She started talking about, yeah, when I was doing that interview, Tupac was, he was flirting with me. Oh God, I was so uncomfortable. And he was in, he just got out of jail for sexual assault. Oh my God. So I was so nervous and oh. Oh man, when she did that dirty ass interview, boy, that pissed everybody off. Talking about how she was so nervous and, oh, Tupac, I felt he wanted me. Oh, my God. And then I went up to death row and they were, they were frisking me and touching my body. Oh, I didn't know what was going to happen to me. Oh, my God. Please. Oh, yeah. She went all, boy, she went all white supremacist, me too on niggas. Oh, that was some dirty ass shit she pulled. Boy, that was so damn disrespectful. Yes, you wish Tupac was flirting with you. Tupac was just being charismatic. Tupac wasn't flirting with you. Man, please. But yeah, people were very disrespected about that. Yeah? Tupac was not flirting with her. Let me see if I could find the audio of that interview of Tabitha Soren to just give a reminder. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can find the audio of that interview just to give a reminder. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can play the audio of that. Um, da -da 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 -da. Where's that? Uh, because when you look it up, videos of me come up. Hold on, Tupac interview. Ah, uh, where is that? Where is that interview? Uh, where she was talking about it. Where is that interview? Tupac. Da, 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 da. Okay, what's interesting, when you look it up. Okay, actually, I come up because I did a broadcast about it years ago. I did a, this was like six years ago. Oh, man. Do I got to go back and listen to my damn self? Hold on. I'm trying to find the original interview of the, the new one where she was talking about it. They probably tried to scrub the internet of it. They probably scrubbed it off the internet. That's the thing, the white supremacist oh, female. Hold on, I'm, I'm playing myself, playing hold, on. hold on. Talking that. Hold on, where is it, where? Hold on. It's implying other, so she's really, where, where is not it? found you. You wait 20 years. I'm trying to I'm find, the, find, where's the audio? Even though you learned oh, here history, it is. You go back so I'm playing. I'm playing myself playing the audio of it. Hold on. Hold on, but it's all over the place. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see something. Into it much more intensely. So I did all that with Tupac, and I also had copies of his new record. Although you know the idea of sitting there in the studio with him and listening to it on camera, I couldn't think of anything more uh, undesirable. It's like yes. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, she, she uh, hold on, man. Our girl, I that 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 interview is just gonna piss me off. Hold on, let me play some of it. Hold on, I'm gonna play some of the audio. I, I found I found it on one of my old on my old video. In that interview, given the recent uh, sexual uh, assault conviction and just a time before. Hold on, let me just go back. That wasn't your go-to music at the time. It, it was, I think, an interesting time hold for on. a woman. You know particularly even a, a white woman, to be doing that interview. Give uh, they were playing, uh, uh, the white man, all of them are getting on code. How was it, how was it for a white woman to be around Tupac? 
as a white woman being around that. How was well, yeah. And the recent uh, sexual uh, assault conviction and just a time before. And Tupac didn't sexually assault nobody, by the way. Okay, but okay. Hip hop was mainstreamed in the way mainstream is defined for rap, which basically means white people listen to it. <laughs> were, were, were you conscious at the time of, I guess, perceived politics or other politics or otherwise politics of doing a sit down with Tupac? I felt like it was a good decision because he saw me as sort of the smart girl on MTV. <laughs> okay. That's a, yes, you toot your own horn. I think that he, um, I think that putting him with a woman was deliberate on MTV's part. And I also think that they didn't want a fan sitting down with him. So even though um, I didn't know much about his music, I mean, I certainly knew about his music by the time I did the interview, but I did it for work. I mean, just like I... She keep... Okay. Okay, I want to go to the part where she was talking about Tupac was flirting with her. I can't find that part. Hold on, where's that part? Where she was talking about Tupac was flirting with her. Hold on. This is pissing me off. Oh, Biggest star, you wait. That was sort of a nerve. There, there it's go. a sexual thing. That's the actual. But then, hold on. Wasn't used to that. So I, I mean, even Bill Clinton didn't flirt with me. So I thought that. That was sort of unnerving. And then I... Okay, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, I think people were both fascinated and even repelled by you and him. It was really interesting. Okay, here it he is. He was here. released from prison on bail. And I remember at the time it being a huge deal. But also re-watching it, I noticed the energy between you and him was really interesting and alive. And I, I was wondering how aware did he seem to you of just his charisma and this aura that I, I think people were both fascinated oh, no, no, no. and even repelled by that charisma and just repelled. Listen to how these folks are talking. They were fascinated and repelled. Who? His overall against just fast. And, and this is how they get on code with each other. The white supremacist, male and woman, they get on code. Fascinated and repelled. Okay, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Well, I was definitely aware of it at the time because I felt like he was flirting through the interview. He was. <laughs> um, oh, no, he no, he wasn't. Tupac wasn't flirting with this dry-ass woman. I mean, get over your fucking. We don't. He himself, he's oh, just... All right, that's enough, that's enough. Okay, all right. All right, I'm just, I'm just giving y'all the context. I'm just giving y'all the context, how they talk. They're like... 20 years later, all of a sudden, she do this interview with Tupac, and then 20 years later, oh, God, he was flirting with me. I was so unnerved, and he was in jail for rape, and is my pussy going to be okay? You fantasizing. You were fantasizing. So, yeah, that Bobby woman gives me the same vibe, man. That Bobby woman gives the same vibe, and she's already given weirdo vibes as part of her shtick, but it ain't really shtick. Y'all think she's just trolling. Y'all better be very careful about around that Bobby woman. This is what I'm saying. I'm just showing y'all, uh, playing all this to, to let you know how they get on call with each other later on. You think that shtick that that woman is doing. That Bobby woman got a Me Too accusation at the tip of her damn tongue, dude. They will flip, and I can see her already. You know, when I was interviewing Offset and he touched my hand, oh, God. You could see how I unnerved I was. Oh, God. I, I just felt like my little vagina was going to get pounded on my black cock. You think? Ain't nobody, them old generic as snow bunnies ain't nobody checking for nobody's checking for you like that so they got to create these negro assault fantasies in their brain tabitha soren has always been a plain jane um mediocre generic ass chick tupac was a superstar when they did this interview this dude had supermodels throwing themselves at him what was Tupac going to do with a dry ass MTV reporter? 
Tupac wasn't thinking about you. That's y'all fantasy. They sit up with with rape fantasies, always fantasizing about brothers doing something to them. I was at the I was at the grocery store and some Negroes were following me. They wanted my pure white cootie cat. No, they don't. That's your fantasy. No. <laughs> That's them fantasizing. And somebody keep asking about Keefe D. I've already talked about Keefe D. I've already talked about that. And speaking of somebody fraudulent, somebody else I called out, that little Tay chick, I told people she's back, she's rebranding. I'm not going to even play the audio. This is, I played like a little snippet. She's back. She done, she's rebranding herself. Hold on. I'm going to play just a little taste of this. Hold on. <laughs> The go is back five years and I'm still the youngest one out five years and y'all bitches are still broke. So don't take it out on me. Okay, so this is her and she's she got a she's branded herself as a music artist. So now like I, I family, I, I told y'all this um, step by step. They did it literally paint by the numbers, like I said. So she didn't put a single out. Um, remember uh, a month or so ago, they faked her death. They were lying, talking about she died. I said immediately, this woman, this girl didn't die. This is Cap. I said, family, this is a fake story they're putting out for publicity. She's not dead because nobody said what the cause of death is. If she died, somebody would have had the cause of death and there would have been police reports, anything. Immediately, I said, okay, this is, this is what's going to happen. They're going to come out and say she's still alive. Then they're going to come out and say that her social media was hacked. Then she's going to come back and then rebrand herself, trying to make a comeback. Literally, everything was done, like, word for word, exactly how I said it. Popped up, hey, guys, I'm alive. A week later, hey, guys, somebody hacked my social media. I don't know who did that. Who said I was dead, but uh-huh, we know you've been hacked. Now the rebrand, there it is. These folks have no talent. We got to understand, we're dealing with a lot of people out here who they have no talent. Them coming around, trolling around black people, that's their only come up. Trolling around black people getting into black sense and then using that as a stepping stone to get notoriety. Just like with this Bobby woman, her going around doing these uncomfortable interviews around black people. That's her come up. I'm telling y'all, they use black people as a come up. We are the grassroots. So we give these people grassroots momentum. Then they get mainstream notoriety. Then they flip over, get mainstream jobs and then denigrate black folks. All right. That's the play. Usually this is why family, we have to gatekeep our culture because they do that with our culture. We let people sit here and share <clears throat> the innovations of our cultures. And then they start slowly absorbing and colonizing it, taking it over and then etching us out of it. And then claiming it as their own. They do that. They're doing that with hip hop now. This is why it's so important that we gatekeep hip hop and the documentary that we come out. Y'all don't understand how important this is. Yeah, Kid Rock, he's another one who gained notoriety with black folks, sat up here, used that grassroots notoriety to get mainstream acceptance. Now he denigrates black people and runs with wide open white supremacists. So family, we got to understand that our genres that we create, we have to stop letting them be colonized. Yes, pop and rock and roll. Yes, they did it with rock and roll. Everything with rock and roll, they colonized. We created rock and roll. And I'm talking about all the aesthetics of rock and roll. See, even the hard rock that we hear. Now, we know we created the foundation of rock and roll. Even the name rock and roll comes out of the foundation of black American community. But the thing is, the distorted guitar riffs, again, 
That's Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix was doing that. Some of the guitar licks that we were doing, Big Mama Thornton and um, um, Chuck Berry, those people. Even the screaming in rock and roll. That foundation of black Americans created that. that ah, I want to rock. That comes from us too. Do you know that? The screaming in rock and roll comes from us. That came from the screaming on records and singing. Number one came from people like Screaming Jay Hawkins. All right. In 1956, he did that record. I got a spell on you. Huge record where he was screaming on the record. That comes from us. Even James Brown. James Brown was one of the early people screaming on soul records and, and R&B records. Also, Tina Turner. Tina Turner was screaming on some of those early records. That's where they got it from. So the white rock groups were emulating Tina Turner, James Brown, um, and, and, and um, Screaming Jay. Yes, yeah, Sister Rosetta Tharp, yes. They were trying to emulate them. Howling Wolf, another brother who was screaming on records. They were, that's where people, they started getting their personalities off of our folks. Howling Wolf, uh, a white dude. If y'all remember, how many of y'all grew up in the 70s? Y'all remember Wolfman Jack? It was a white dude, a famous DJ called Wolfman Jack. He got his voice and his whole shtick from our Foundation of Black American brother, Howling Wolf. Because Howling Wolf used to sing, hey, I don't, I don't, I, I see you go, girl, I see you go. He would kind of sing in that rough voice. So a white man named Wolfman, he called himself Wolfman Jack, became a radio DJ doing the same voice. Yeah, Little Richard was screaming on records too. That came out of the black church. But yeah, Wolfman Jack was very, he was huge in the 70s, if y'all remember. Wolfman Jack, well, yeah, he was on the Gong Show. Wolfman Jack was all over the place. He was emulating Howling Wolf. Howling, yeah, Howling Wolf was no joke. Badass brother. Yeah. So that screaming on record, that was the white rock guys trying to emulate Howling Wolf, Little Richard, James Brown, Screaming Jay Hawkins. That was them trying to emulate our FBA family. Yeah. They all got it from us, dude. So now when we look at rock and roll, we're on the outside. Yeah? We're on the outside of rock and roll now. People took our whole thing and we didn't gatekeep it. We just gave it away. So we got to stop giving it away. We got to let folks know we have to make things and put things um, in the historic record because that's very important, family. Yeah, a lot of y'all didn't know this stuff. Yeah, a lot of y'all didn't know this stuff, where all of this stuff comes from. All that shit that these white rockers do, they all got it from us. Literally got it from us directly. The Rolling Stones, at least they gave it up. The Rolling Stones went to Muddy Waters and said, yeah, we're going to take the name of your song and name in our group. Shit. That's how much we're going to bite off you. Um, the Beatles, all these guys came and got around black folks and started soaking up game. Black folks, the Beatles were signed to a black label when they got here. I talked about that before. Black folks put them on. Yeah, Ray Charles too. Yeah, that, that shit was coming out of the church. They were putting some of that church aesthetic in some of those R&B songs, man. Yeah. Man. Heavy stuff. But we got a lot of folks. Shout out to everybody in here. The, the documentary that we got coming, man, it's going to be a monster. This is why it's important for us to put things in the historic record, to get things historically documented. We got to put it in, in the historic record. Um, I saw, saw an interview with Jay-Z, speaking of hip hop, Jay-Z was talking with um, Kevin Hart. I don't know where they were when they did this interview. I don't know when they did this interview, but this was interesting. Some people kind of got upset with them in this conversation. Um, they were talking about giving people money. Let me play this. Um, fair use. Fair use, by the way. Fair use. Let me play this interview. This is an interesting conversation that they had. And the, the response to it. Some people kind of got upset with this. 
about, well, damn, Jay-Z and them got all that money. Why are they tripping? But listen to this conversation about money and lead, lending money to family. Hold on. From that space. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like you, you know, you'll have people that where you come from, if you behave in a certain manner, that ain't, it's not accustomed to where they are. Right. Some people haven't evolved past 16. They still stuck right. in that place. Right. Evolving every year. Mm -hmm. Right. So that may be a threat to them. Right. Subconsciously or consciously, they care back and funny because blah, blah, blah. You have to navigate that. Mm -hmm. You have cousins. You got to go home for Thanksgiving right. and people are talking to you like Kevin Hart. And you going home for solace. You want family. You're going home for peace of mind. You're going home for peace right. of mind. They don't give you that. Your cousins, you're not, you're not your cousins that. in your grandma's living room say, yo, man, I got this. Uh, I got this play. I want to, if you just give me, you know what I mean? 4,800, I could make you 2 million. You're yeah. like, it don't work like yeah. that, family. You got to explain to him, like, life isn't right. like that. If money isn't free and no one's given our opportunities. If it sounds too good to be true, it's really, and then he like, oh, you don't believe in my dreams. Where, so, where did... Okay. Now, what's interesting about that, because I agree with Jay on this, and you got people hating. I never get over a billionaire saying some bullshit like this. But they should be giving their cousins money. <laughs> Look at the comments. No one around this will say this to them, but they should be giving their cousins money. That's exactly how it should be working. Um, no. No, no, no. You don't just give people money just because. No. So you got people who are actually mad that Jay-Z was saying, hey, you know, People asking for money. You no, know, you're not supposed to just give them money. You just, I, no, I'm not going to just give my family money and all. No, it don't work like that, which is true. Which is true. So you got people in there in the comment. Hell, he's a billionaire. $4,800. That ain't no money. He can go to hell. You a bill. How you? A lot of tethers. <laughs> well, you a billionaire. How you got all that money? You ain't getting nobody. No, 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 no. You don't give nobody money just to give it to them just because they're around you, whatever. No, 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 no. I agree. Let me tell you something. Even if you got it, you know, just because you got it don't mean nothing. Just because you got it don't mean nothing. Listen, sometimes people around you when you help people who are ungrateful, not only is that bad, you ain't going to get your money back, but these people will turn on you. I want y'all to understand that, dude. Sometimes helping people is bad because the people you help, because they're so ungrateful, they will turn around and take that as an opportunity to turn on you. You know, remember Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown and all these people, they were helping their family members and you had some of their dusty family members selling stories to the tabloids all the damn time. And these were family members they were helping. And then they go run to the tabloid and take pictures of a crack pipe and send the shit to the Inquirer. They were doing little dusty nigga stuff. Certain family members do. You can't help people like that. They'll turn on you. MC Hammer. Helped all those people up there in the town, and a lot of people turned on them. Certain people, look, I th there's people that I've helped. Man, like our last event we had down in Dallas, there were some people who were in our inner circle. That's why you don't see me fucking with them no more. Y'all know who they are. People that I done sat here and helped, and they were working from the inside trying to sabotage the shit. From the inside, going out of their way, some people on the inside, close to us, the, sabotaging the shit out of it and just doing some other saboteur type of stuff too. People connected to some of the events we were having. You understand what I'm saying? Especially down in Dallas. Dallas was the uh, a major, major tipping point for that type of dirty, degenerate behavior from people within the circle doing little sucker ass shit behind the scenes trying to sabotage it. You know what I'm saying? People that you that we just sat up here and helped, did nothing but help. You understand? Going out of their way to just fuck everything off. You understand? That's why certain people you see, I don't mess with them no more. And that's why we, we, we cutting that stuff down, certain people. Yeah, there were people working close to us doing some fuck shit. Yeah? Working in our inner circle, doing some janky ass stuff. Yeah. 
And these are people that, I mean, I have literally gone out of my way to help and put on, literally gone out of my way. And I'm talking about they were doing, they were doing janky fuck shit even way before the, the event. They were doing, because I'm finding out, I'm finding out a whole bunch of shit that they were doing some janky fuck shit way before the event. They've been doing janky little bullshit all along, to be honest. They've been doing little janky ass shit all along. No, Ola's my nigga. No, Ola's the homie. No, no, no. I ain't talking about Ola. Ola's the homie. That's my rider. Yeah. You, you did. You got to watch it. There's some people who I'm, I'm telling you, people who we didn't put on sitting right next to us. And I'm talking about sitting here working with ops against us from the inside. Yeah. Working with full blown ops against us from the inside, dude. You got to be careful. You can't be putting everybody on, man. Yeah. You cannot put everybody on. You cannot help people, dude. Y'all know y'all know who I'm talking about. Hell, y'all know who the fuck I'm talking about. And they know who I'm talking about. No, Ola's the homie. No, Ola's good. Ola's good people, dude. When we did the event, doubt it was a whole bunch of weird shit going on, dude. It was some. It was weird shit going on with that from top to bottom. There was some people. They had ops, man. It was so many intelligent agency types of shits going on. There was somebody who was calling the venue. Every day making threats. It was some re it was Cointel Pro shit from top to bottom with that event down there, man. You dig? It was some real oppy type shit going on with that event and the people connected to it. Yeah. Just ask yourself a question. Why, when when certain people are throwing mud, look at look at who ain't getting mud thrown on them. That's who you'll know when something's going on. When when you got some of your ops mud slinging, and there's somebody next to you who ain't getting no mud on them. Yeah? Always look at that. When there's mud slinging, your ops are mud slinging left and right. They're mud slinging on everybody around you, but one person ain't getting no mud on them. That lets you know everything you need to know. Yeah? You feel me? Just look and see who ain't getting no mud thrown at them. No, no, Bree and Layla are cool. Those are the homegirls. No, no, no. Bree and Layla, those are my ride or die. That's why they were down there. No, Bree Bri and Layla, those are the riders. Those are like my sisters, man. Those are the riders. No, Teslin is the homie. Teslin is a real one. Teslin is the realest sister out there, dude. Teslin, Teslin is the realest sister out there. I love Teslin. That's my sister. Yeah. It still turned out to be a beautiful event. Yes, it did. It still turned out to be a beautiful event. Yes, it did. It did turn out to be a very beautiful event. Yes, it did. But y'all don't understand the level of shit that was going on behind the scenes. Y'all don't know the half of it. Nigga, if y'all knew the half, y'all be like, nigga, that's some Cointel Pro shit that was going on. Yeah? It was some damn Cointel Pro type shit going on behind the scenes, dude. For real, for real. Huh? But but what Jay-Z said was very real. What Jay-Z said was real. And shout, and shout out to Dame Dash. Dame hit me up, texted me the other day. Speaking of Jay-Z and Dame, um, Dame hit me up. Dame, what did Dame launched a streaming site? Let me shout my brother Dame out. I got to do an interview with my brother Dame. With my brother Dame Dash. Dame has launched a streaming service. I got to get me and Dame, we chop up some good game. America New Network. America NU Network. That's Dame. He has a streaming service, and I got to holler at Dame. Dame's a solid man. Dame doesn't get enough credit. I don't like people taking shots at Dame. I know him and Irv Gotti, they've been kind of going at it. And now, now, Dame, let me tell you something, man. And I like Jay-Z. I love Jay-Z. I love Jay-Z. Dame is a solid dude, man. Let me tell you something. Jay-Z would not have popped off if it weren't for Dame. Let, let's keep it. That's not a slight on Jay. That's not a slight on Jay-Z at all. 
But but Jay Z would not have popped off if it were not for Dave. And that whole if you made a hole, make another hole. But the thing is that my dude has rode so hard and, and burned so many bridges riding for the for, for my man. Y'all gotta remember, remember, Jay Z was trying to get record deals before it got with Dame. Jay Z had been trying to get record deals for a long time. Jay Z kept getting turned down. Remember, Jay Z was rolling with Kane. Big Daddy Kane. Jay Z was rolling with Big Daddy Kane. And Kane kept saying, hey, I was trying to get Jay a record deal. We just kept getting turned down. Yeah, we kept getting turned down. Remember, Jay couldn't get a record deal. When, when Jay got with Dame, Dame brought some of that Harlem flavor, some of that Harlem sauce to kind of balance that Brooklyn edge. See, that's the that Harlem sauce, man. Even with Biggie. When Biggie got with Puffy, Puffy put some of that Harlem flavor on it to kind of balance that Brooklyn hard thing off, smooth it out with some Harlem player shit. Got Biggie popping off. You understand? Same thing with Jay. Jay was, you know, doing the hardcore Brooklyn thing. Um, Dame kind of brought that, that Harlem flavor. Hey, you know, we popping Chris style. We rocking this kind of, we, 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 we balling, you know, we, we got some of that Harlem flavor that's going to balance that out. So when they put all of that together, repackage Jay as a smooth player hustler, that was it right there. That was the look right there. That was Dame. You think? That was Dame. Dame brought that balance to the game, man. Dame brought a balance with Jay-Z. Not saying that he made Jay-Z or whatever, but that balance and the chemistry was real fly. I know, people always say, Puffy ain't from Harlem, he's from Mount Vernon. But Puffy was representing Harlem. Puffy was out there in Harlem. Puffy was out there in Harlem, and Puffy had the Harlem flavor. We're not going to deny her puppy's Harlem flavor. But that Harlem hustle vibe and that flavor, you think? that was the appeal. That was the appeal. Yeah. Because, again, I, when I first went to New York, I was hanging with Harlem hustlers because the impression I got of New York before I went, I went to New York in early 90s. Before I went to New York, I, I just saw what I saw in the video. So you had a lot of these niggas with backpacks and Timberlands in music videos. So I'm like, I'm kind of, let me be on guard with these niggas. You saw grimy looking niggas from Brooklyn with backpacks and Timberlands. And that was the image of New York. A bunch of Brooklyn niggas with backpacks and razor blades and, and Timberlands and dreadlocks. Rapping real hard over real hard beats. And doing their hands like that. <laughs> Run, run, I run, run. That's what they, we got that impression of New York niggas. That was the impression we had. Run, 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 gun, gun, stun, bum, bum. We had that impression of New York dudes. So when I went out there, I was hanging with Harlem dudes and I was like shocked because these niggas were real player. It wasn't like that. These niggas were fresh and they were, they were riding fly ass whips. I'm like, oh shit. Whoa. And they like West Coast stuff a lot. They were playing NWA out there. I was shocked by that. So yeah, the, the that Harlem vibe, it was, it was a very appealing vibe. I was hanging with them Harlem dudes and they were just going around getting money, hollering at the ladies, driving fly whips. So that was appealing. I'm like, I like these New York niggas. This is I. Yeah, I, I had New York all twisted. These cats are hella cool. I like, I like New York. Yeah. Yeah, Jay used to, yeah, he used to be on the fast rap tip. A big big run 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 the sticky dick gun 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 you know that so yeah Dame brought that balance we got to give it to Dame y'all can't deny Dame that no 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 Dame Dame did bring that balance he brought that Harlem flavor um got that 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 whole Harlem hustle thing man that was big that was a, that was a big vibe and and again I'm, I'm, that's not taking anything from Jay Z because I love Jay Z Jay Z is phenomenal phenomenal businessman the whole shebang phenomenal lyricist. But as when you look at Jay Z's catalog, you know all that the, the that Rockefeller era, it wasn't nothing like that. And you know you that was Dame's doing. 
Yeah. That was Dame's doing. We got to give it up to Dame on that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but we, we in here heavy. We in here deep. But listen, I hope you guys got your root work deodorant, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody get your root work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. Rootworkstyle.com, my good family. Rootworkstyle.com. Um, anyway, and also, guys, go to um, HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Make a donation to the Hidden History Museum. Um, that really helps us out. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, let me get up out of here. Um, look, y'all watch my social media. Everybody, if you have not subscribed, y'all need to subscribe here. Subscribe so you'll get notified when we are going to show the trailer for the new documentary ladies and gentlemen we got a trailer for the new documentary that's coming soon so y'all watch the space you guys